after John Diddy's 20 years of vanning video, um, we uh, which went down really well, and we've got a few people saying, why does Mandy look so bored? <laughs> yeah. So I was sat there thinking, LED lighting, inverters, and stuff like that. So I figured I'll go for my hints and tips that I've picked up over 20 years of camping, vanning, touring in bands. I thought you were going to say 20 years of putting up with me then. Well, that's a very long list. We've not got enough time <laughs> for that. That's not for YouTube either, yeah. is it? So please bear with me. And uh, I'm not trying to teach you anything you don't already know. And please, if you've got any super duper tips, always, always um, up for hearing more about what everybody thinks is, uh, is a really cool tip. So I'll just pop them down below and leave us a comment. So... Fire away. Fire away. I'll try and not look bored. Yeah, so he's just going to sit there and go, <laughs> but no, I'm not bored the whole time. <laughs> so, coffee. You have to take coffee. I have to take coffee all the no, time. Not it's not solid. No. So I've got five different ways of having coffee. I've got my Nespresso machine, thanks to John. I have a stovetop um, coffee press. I have a little cafetiere cup that's insulated that does single cup uh, coffees, which is brilliant. A normal instant coffee and then as a treat I have those little sachets of cappuccino so hopefully I'm uh, guaranteed covered for coffee it's covered for coffee because I'm a grouchy bugger when I've not had coffee so <laughs> it's definitely better for uh, for morning morning yes and afternoon and, yes no speaker before coffee no 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 them's the rules absolutely and if I do use the kettle um to make coffee I tend to put a bit more water in there than I need and then I put what's left over in a flask so then I can have more coffee. More coffee. I don't need to keep boiling the kettle which means the hob's got a chance to cool down before we drive off as well. So what I do when I'm having a wash in the van is I've got sweat bands that I wear so I can have a nice wash, don't have to worry about all the water dribbling down my arm because the sweat bands catch it, whip them off, chuck them back in the cupboard and jobs are good because there's nothing worse than being all like this all over a bowl and getting water everywhere. And they're little flannelette things, aren't they? Sweatpants. So, yeah. Because yeah. I wouldn't know what sweatpants, sweatpants are. are. It's because you don't exercise, honey. Yeah, sweatpants. I think it was Dire Straits on his video with that thing round his well, head. You can get them for your wrists as well. Yeah. yeah. Ridge monkeys. Ridge monkeys, and I do say plural, have to be done. Because I like veggies. John does not. No. I like things like sweet chilli sauce and stuff like that. John does not. No. I like barbecue sauce. So if we've got two ridge monkeys, it means that we can cook almost anything. They're like little ovens, and as long as you know you cook everything low and slow and keep turning them over, we've not managed, we've not buggered up anything yet, yeah. have we? We've I cooked frozen pizza. He didn't cook. He's not cooked anything for me for years, but he cooked himself <laughs> a frozen pizza in the ridge monkey. So that's a good thing. Yeah. So um, you don't have to get the branded ones. Um, there's some really good ones out there nowadays that are not, and they've got apparently got a better seal on them. But we. Love ours and use them all the time. So the one thing that we need in the van and we've had in every van are walkie-talkies. Oh, yeah. So we have these. And it basically, it started off that we were caravanning. And you know what it's like when you, you're either hitching up or you're pitching up and you're trying to manoeuvre into place. And it's normally a bit better if one person is out of the car. It definitely makes it better to swear at each other oh, when yeah. you're getting very cross because something's not quite going right. Or when you're doing the awning and one person's at one end and one person's at the other, you can go, Snake, John. You can whisper. Yeah. You stupid idiot, John. You are nowhere near the peg. The caravan club will eject us. <laughs> That's been said more than once. <laughs> Absolutely. So these are brilliant. Of course, you've got the added option of uh, giving them to the kids so they can play in yeah. the playground or giving them to somebody else in the van if you're in convoy or whatever. But I don't think we've been vanning for years without these. No. They are Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So this one. This one oh, yeah. is the cause of this. So a place for everything and everything in its place. Oh, that one. So we've been used to caravanning. Um, most of the time has been caravanning too. It's like you pitch up, you set everything out, and everything just stays there because you get in your car and you go out somewhere for the day. Somebody just there's gadgets everywhere. Can you imagine what it's like in this van with Mr. Gadget and no specific place to put them? I keep saying I make him a bag. We'll put something on the front of the cupboard so he can drop them in, or just something to get them out of the way. But no. Can't sit down, gadget there, gadget there, gadgets here, gadgets there, gadgets on the bed, gadget bags opened up on the bed. There are gadgets everywhere. There isn't a place 
for me to put everything I need well, the when gadget, I need it. The gadget bag is yeah. everything in its place. Yeah, but then that means I've got to be tidy. Yeah, well, that's the problem, you see. But then he's always the one. I'll be like, oh, I'll go for a nap. Oh, I can't go for a nap. Oh, I'll just sit down and have a coffee. Can't get the coffee out because it's stored under here. And I can't put the coffee machine out because there's gadgets there. So marital harmony, place for everything, and just put things back. Put things back. Good boy. Yes, ma'am. So, another little funny story. So, I always say, make your bed before you open the wine. <laughs> because we've had, and this is what is what's made, we've got a fixed bed. Um, and it may be partly to do with, Lesson learned. with, with this. So, we've been camping in France. Very quick story. Um, with some friends and we'd been having a good old drink outside you and had. we'd all been having a good drink outside okay. and it was my job because I did it properly to make the bed so it was one of those ones typical caravan pull out the rack at the front put all the cushions in and of course all the bedding and everything is stored under the bed boxes in the front of the van mm -hmm. so I pulled a bit out in the middle and did it all slightly different order slid the thing out under the bed under the bed boxes to try and get in and reach some pillows and stuff and in my slightly inebriated state I kind of slid into the bed box with just my legs sticking up out of the air and these lot having a right roaring time outside yeah. didn't notice me they didn't notice I was missing for 15 minutes so yeah. I'd gone to sleep in this bed box yeah that was and then funny. I woke up to a caravan full of people laughing at me because there was just these two legs you know not helping or anything just laughing at me <laughs> so moral of the story make your bed before you open the wine yeah and move your gadgets off the bed as well yeah so we've got a lovely little fridge in our van i know lots of people don't have um freezer boxes in them or whatever but if you do have a freezer make sure you carry some ice and i mean loose ice and not ice in the ice bags even though we do use them as well and it's a really good hint because a hash brown or some chips or a burger or anything. Or veg even. Or veg. They look the same if it's been defrosted and frozen again. You can't tell the difference. Some things might stick together a bit more, but they do that in the freezer anyway. Whereas if you've got ice cubes in a bag, you can tell if there's been any interruption of power to your fridge or freezer. So it's an easy way to see and make sure everything's okay. Because if you've just got like a big block of ice in the bottom, the bottom of your bag, you might have to watch what food you've got. If you've got meat in there that's uh, that might have been defrosted and refrozen again. So we all love going away and chilling out in the van. Mm -hmm. Chilling is a good thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So if you haven't got one, get a Kindle. And I know there's going to be some diehard bibliophiles out there that's like, no, I have to have a book. And I get that. I love the smell of a book. I really do. But with a Kindle, I can carry 200 books and it doesn't take up any extra space. I've got a paperwhite Kindle, which means I can read it at night time and don't disrupt John because I no. do tend to wake up in the middle of the night and need to read. No rustling pages, so don't mm. have to worry about keeping away with noise either, which I'm sure you appreciate greatly. Mm. And we have Amazon Prime as well. And part of Amazon Prime, you get Prime Reading. And I think it's something like 5,000 books you'll get included with Prime Reading. So, and they're the really good ones as well, and, and um, there's a massive choice on there. And as soon as you get a Kindle as well, you have access to uh, the Kindle Lending Library. And you can borrow a book a month um, from them as well, and it's included in the price of your Kindle. So it's just, I don't know what I'd do without mine. It's brilliant. I've had, um, uh, you know, like self-help books and chiclet and these comics. You can get stuff, with these pictures with, with things, so there's... Um, no limit to, to what you can get and there's some places that you can email yourself a, a PDF or a Word document and you get a Kindle email address so if you've got anything at all you want to read you can just email it to your Kindle and then you can read it on there absolutely brilliant and it's about a week on a charge normally isn't it? Sometimes? I get two weeks and I'm reading really? all the time yeah it's pretty good so it is really good coffee and books <sighs> yeah. and I, I know this is going to be everyone will already have this thing Find a place for your shoes, John. So, have a place for your shoes, because there's nothing worse than when your dog needs a wee in the middle of the night and you can't find them. Or you need to go to the on-site facilities, or you hear a funny noise and you have to go around somewhere. And have or, or you need to move your van. Or you need to move your van. Wild camping. Like, surprise, wild camping. you've got camping. to, like, back in the driver's seat and scoot off. So, dedicated place for shoes. I was go there. Down the, down the front, nice and easy yep. to grab between, in between the seats. 
uh, in between the two the two seats, seats yeah. and we just we just pop them there and they go there every time we take our shoes off so we know where to go grab them again we've been caught short too many times with putting them in the bathroom out of the way or yeah, putting them putting back them in cupboards and stuff be, yeah. so it just is one one lesson we've learned keep a place for your shoes so get fairy lights <laughs> everybody needs fairy lights so we've got fairy lights going around here and we've got them in the back because we've got a, a roof light and we've got them going around the roof light it's just such a nice light it gives off a really really nice ambient light it does not drain your batteries um and you know the fairy lights <laughs> we've got to have fairy lights it took me ages to persuade john to get some in the van yeah i didn't want the mess of them because they're kind of like I don't know. You were thinking of something off like your mum's old Christmas tree with yeah, the little plastic yeah. flower things on the end. And what we've managed to find is something very neat where the actual lights are uh, within the same kind of size as the wire. As the wire, yeah. Well, they actually are quite nice, really. So yeah. I'll let you off with that. Thank you. Just about finding the right ones, you see. Yeah, okay. Same with everything, like husbands. <laughs> really? So you need to carry a collapsible bucket. So you need to wash your hair, collapsible bucket. You need a fire bucket collapsible bucket need to wash your dog need to wash your underwear wash the van collapsible bucket need to flush the toilet and you've got no water anywhere scoop something from somewhere in your collapsible bucket need to store your wet clothes if you've got wet clothes or shoes or anything like that pop them in your collapsible bucket and last but not least if your toilet's full or you know you're desperate you can pour a bag in it and poop in a bucket just don't sit on just it. Just don't sit on it because it's collapsible. Yeah. That could get really messy. But you know. A bit shitty, really. Yeah. <laughs> so one thing we find is we use the top cupboards in the uh, in the bedroom for storing our clothes in. Yep. And obviously you go driving down roads, especially if John's driving. You go driving down roads. She used to follow in Dave and like that. <laughs> mm, yeah, very true. Actually. Dangerous yeah. Dave. Yeah, dangerous Dave. Um, and find that when you go to open the cupboard, there's nothing worse than being hit in the face with your knickers and socks. Objects may have moved during transportation. Yeah, absolutely. So what I did is I ran up a couple of bags on my sewing machine, just using some fabric, and we now store all of our undies and whatever. We've got clean bag and a dirty bag mm -hmm. for undies, and it just makes it so much better. I mean, I suppose the one thing worse than being hit in the face with clean undies is to be hit in the face with dirty undies. Oh, yeah, no one likes that. So, you know little bag of each and then when you chuck them in whatever it just makes them so much easier to find and handle and, and deal with it's good i think the average age the biggest segment of our audience is the um 40 to 50 kind of bracket right so yeah and, and men and more than 85 percent men yeah okay so i apologize to the majority of our audience right now but there's something to tell your missus and your, your daughters whatever but reusable can we have girlfriends as well as missus this is it's just a generalisation oh, for... Okay. So you don't have to be married to her. Still can. Do you, you rather have, whoever needs sanitary products, for God's sake. Oh. Sanitary products. So, reusable sanitary products, more than anything else. So, and I know this is TMI, but I'm going with it now because I'm here. I use a moon cup. And it's a little cup like this. And you use it, or you, you use it once a day literally it goes in and then it gets em emptied and rinsed and then used again and it just means you're not carrying around loads and loads and loads and loads of packets of things you don't have to keep going to the supermarket if you're out in the middle of nowhere you don't have to try and store the after product which is not the nicest thing to do and is just stinky and awful really um and i use reusable liners which john gave a name of mandy liners which are what they are um and they are dead easy you can rinse them out in the collapsible bucket so they're not in the van um and they dry dead quick and you can use them but it's the best thing i have ever done it literally is liberating because i'm not tied to shops i'm not tied to having to make sure i've got oh, I've got, oh hopefully i've got enough of that with me i'll just keep one in the van and it's just there for whenever i need it absolutely fantastic it's a lot simpler isn't it i don't whinge at you as much for needing to go to the shop and buy me things uh. You don't want to go into the shops now. No. So, what we figured out is that you need to check your driving license because um, my driving license looks really different to John's driving license because he's an old fart. So I have different classifications of vehicles I can drive and weight limits. So, because I passed my test at the end of May 1997 and just missed the threshold for being able to get the same stuff as John's got, mm. 
So I had to pass my test so I could tow a caravan over three and a half tons. I am limited to three and a half tons driving with the van. With this, yeah. Yeah, you know, as John's got up to seven and a half tons. Loads of other bits of classifications on there. And I've had to pass so many other little tests and things to get the same as you've got, what you've yeah. got with your licence. Mm. So, and I'm way better driver than Johnny. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, just, just have a look at the back of your licence and check it out because we were surprised with the difference between our two. Um, so, uh, multi-purpose cleaning products. So, there's nothing worse than running out of something if you need to clean when you're in the van. And I don't like the idea of using lots and lots of chemically sprays when we're in such small, confined space. So, I tend to go down the, the natural route. Um, for cleaning everything with a, sp with a spray bottle, I um, use white vinegar, water and a little bit of the e-cover washing up liquid makes an absolutely brilliant degreaser, cleaner, all the glass and all, all streak free and mm. everything isn't it? it is absolutely amazing stuff you can mix bicarbonate soda with that same white vinegar to clean your drains wash it through and it fizzes up and um and gives them a good old clean if they get a bit stinky you can make it into a paste and you do anything that's really hard and, and difficult to clean you can use bicarbonate soda and water as shampoo if you run out of shampoo and you can use apple cider vinegar and water as a conditioner if you run out of that as well and i'd uh, say they are safe so no fear about, you know, problems with your hair. I tell you. Anyway, it is really good and it just means that you just need to keep like three or four things in your kitchen. I have them in my kitchen anyway because I use apple cider vinegar for dressings um, and use bicarb obviously for bacon and stuff like that. So it is just really good to know that they can be used for all sorts of other things for cleaning. And if you are just dropping your wastewater wherever you go, you're not going to be dropping loads of chemicals there yeah. either. And it just makes it really good for the environment as well. And as someone who has asthma, the fact that there's no fragrance in what you're producing, other yeah. than the smell of great of vinegar, it's yeah. a gravy then. It makes me, makes me want <laughs> chips and gravy with salt and vinegar. And that's it. Other than that, it's all right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, it is. It's been so much better for your breathing, mm. hasn't it, when I'm doing that. So yeah. It's good stuff. We're slowly going round and putting bungee cords in all the cupboards so just a couple of them about that far apart um we use the Look neck curtain nice. eyelet things and yeah. tie it around there and uh, it's really easy to get things in and out you can stretch them we've got some open shelves in the bathroom and we've just stretched a couple on there and then keep the towels in place and the toilet rolls mm. in place and they are just one of the easiest things to do great thing to have a little retrofit so you can put tall things in tall cupboards and not worry about them falling out and you don't lose space with baskets because we tried mm. baskets at first didn't we yeah and because of the shape of the baskets it was never quite right so now a few bungee cords nice yeah. and tight in there get the eyelets brilliant. screw the eyelets in because obviously most of a camper van's wood so just screw it in um, and then just get bungee cord for the size of the eyelet you got so. yeah so we've got two different sizes we've got big fat ones for the really strong stuff mm. and then thinner ones for for in the cupboards but yeah it's made a massive difference mm. it's really good so that's it that's things that mandy has found helpful in the 20 odd years that she's been banning in whichever shape or form yeah and um i hope they've helped I hope there's, there's something new in there that you didn't know before please share with me i love this kind of stuff so give us some posting and let us know what you think anything that you do if you found any of them useful any super cool funny stories i like anecdotes as yeah. well like that kind what of stuff. she means by posting is um go to the comment section below the video or even better because mandy's obviously running the website with the blog and everything blogging yeah this is on the website as a blog and you can actually leave a comment on the blog on the yep, website you can and then mandy will reply to you yep and i will and i will reply so yeah <laughs> so yeah i would love to hear from anybody um if you've got any anything to to tell me that'd be absolutely fantastic and if you want a Gadget Life hoodie, t-shirt, or sticker, there's a link on our website. Because a few people have been asking about that, and we haven't promoted it. We just thought we'd do it. So, yeah, there's a link on the website. takes you to our shop. It's not our shop, but it's one of those things where I've uploaded a logo, chosen a few products that we like. Um, we don't make any money out of it. Nope. Um, buy some merch, and then um, you join the Gadget Life. Yeah, and then send us a picture on yeah. Instagram. Tag us in it. Yeah. Gadget Down on Tour. Or... Or B roll Mandy. Or hashtag gadget life like it says or, on the shirt. <coughs> or <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Or it. hashtag gadget life yeah. like it says on my jumper.